The Tight Five. Okay, five separate sporting topics, 60 seconds on each there or thereabouts. When the bell dings, so do we. On to the next topic. We'll try and get through them pretty quickly because we've got a lot to do. Is Rico going to Japan? Is it a bona fide three-way title race now in the Premier League? Say something encouraging or positive about the Black Caps before Matt Gunn comes on and be really positive about them. The Breakers, the Warriors, kicking it off. Super Rugby this weekend. The stories out of both Australia and Japan is that Rico sign he is leaving. Do you believe this is true? Well, um, I'm pretty sure he broke the story. Uh, but Christy Doran, out of the Roar in Australia, who we've had on the show a couple of times, he's reported it. So I'd believe him. So by that, I believe it's true. And... I don't know. I, I, this is always my thought with these stories. When there's smoke, there's fire. There's mm-hmm. a lot of smoke. There's mm-hmm. a lot of smoke, both on this area of the in this area of the world and also in Japan. So I think it is true. Rico Iwani says, I don't know anything about it. We approached the New Zealand Professional Rugby Players Association and they said, we don't know anything about it. It was virtually the same quote that Rico said, mm-hmm. which leads me to believe that it is true because working in this business long enough, when people deny it as emphatically as that... There's normally something to hide. This is a real worry. It's a weird thing to say as well. This is a real worry for me in that up until now, the the lure of the all-black jersey has kept players here. Uh, We haven't lost a first-choice all-black in the prime of his career. Luke McAllister? Well, uh, easily replaceable. Let's be He's never a first choice all back, was well, he? Well, he started for us in the World Cup quarter final, man of the match. Yeah, we lost to France, but. Uh, never. I would, look, I, I would consider, say, like, Adi Savier decides to go permanently, right? Oh, Adi's much better than Rico. Okay, so, but I'm talking about, like, when Jerome Kano left, that was a bit of a shock, although he said he only wanted to go for a couple of He eventually came back. Chris Jack, mm-hmm. one of the best locks in the country. Well, in the world, really, when he left. But he at, was the, in the prime. at the end of his, kind of uh, at the end was, of his all back career. 27, 28 when he left. Anyway, sorry. Continue, I, well, continue, the sorry. idea that we lose one who has actually still got four or five years left in an All Black jersey and and it being a first choice All Black, this could open the floodgates. If that silver fern is not the lure anymore, instead of playing for pride, it becomes a ticket to ride. It, it, we could be in a situation like New Zealand cricket are facing themselves, where players. They're using that jersey, and so they look at them. I'm not. I'm not saying. I'm not saying that they shouldn't go and earn the money. Or hell, I'm not telling you not to. But where the jersey is basically a ticket to get bigger riches. So you do a little bit of time in the national team, and you earn your stripes from that to be able to get overseas contracts. I do. And how the hell do we keep players here if we don't? If we if we can't pay them as much? I would think that if the All Blacks, I don't think it's as simple as this. There's plenty more going on, and part of it is not to be disrespectful. Part of it is Rico's own motivation to get paid. But I do think part of it is the form of the All Blacks over the last couple of years and their inconsistencies. Well, that's down to the players, isn't it? Well, it's down to the players, but to his credit, Rico's not one of those players. He's been yeah, one of the better performing ones over the last yeah, year or so. True. And you and I are cri- very critical of Rico. Well, I just... But I too, who much is given, much is expected. I think he but, just should be a hell of a lot better than he is. But, I mean, if this was the All Blacks of, say, nine years ago, so 2014, or no, go 2012, after, after we won a 20 leaf and World Cup, Graham Henry stepping away. Or even after 2015, when we had all those, that's a better example, we had all those good players leaving, there was still kind of like a foundation of talent mm-hmm. coming through. We still had a good coach. Uh-huh. So there's a lot to keep players around. We had the Lions series a few years after that. And there's still a bit to stick around, I would think. But maybe the downfall of the NPC coupled with Super Rugby being and a joke. they don't joke, want to play Super Rugby anymore, mate. Coupled they... with the All Blacks and not being in great form and maybe it's too hard for some of these players to, to face tough international competition. I don't know. Maybe that's part of it as well. Is it a bona fide three-way title race in the Premier League? Yes. No. It is. No, well, well, let me answer because you asked me. Purely based on numbers and the fact that there's five points between first and third. And then there's seven points between third and fourth. Don't want to talk about it. <coughs> well, no, hold up. I'm not talking about You've it. You've got to face it here. No. That your club no. is in the title no. race. No. Why not? Because. Why? Because I'm in the middle of things. You won't jinx See, them, what can. I say on the radio 12,000 miles away say, is going to make an absolute did, effect did on what goes on in the park in, 20, in, in 2013 or something. That meant that you say something on the lines of that, you know what, Moyes is going to come in, we're going to win all these trophies. <laughs> and then up. that didn't happen. So <laughs> now you're so nervous about saying anything along those lines? Say something positive or encouraging about the Black Caps. Well, the Cyclone's gone. <clears throat> Some good weather to play in. First that, three days are sold yeah. out in Wellington. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a positive. Okay, all right, that's all I needed.
Breakers, we're about to talk to Liam Santa Maria from NBL Overtime about this. We, was it ever in doubt with you yesterday? Because it wasn't in doubt for me, even though that, and I watched most of the game, even though the Breakers struggled early, they were down early. This team has made a sterner stuff. And once they got their defensive act together, and Liam will explain this a lot better than I, because he's our basketball guru when it comes to the ANBL. Uh, but I was never really worried that the Breakers were going to lose that game. Um, I was a bit, I was a bit nervous because it was a sudden death playoff matchup, and the break, uh, Breakers haven't been in that position for a couple of years. Yeah, a number of years. But so, I just think Modi May always got them made it to the sternest stuff at the moment. They just, you know, they're not a team that collapses and folds. They had that, that what four game blip during the season. I think it was three or four. Three yeah. or four overcame that. Yeah, I don't know. I just, I just, I just felt like once we got the defensive end sorted. And that's both ends of the that's court. Where it I'm just starts, yeah. yeah, I'm just talking about the rebounding and actually competing in defence. And I just thought, nah. I was always just, just thinking, yeah, we'll get through this. We Warriors. Okay. Stop. <laughs> I may have been a little over exuberant after the, the preseason performance against the West Tigers. Down to earth with a goddamn thump yesterday. Are the storm that good? Yes, well, the Storm have done this for a number of years now where they lose really good players and they seem to find these yes. randoms out of nowhere yeah, and are still really good yeah. because of their coach. Well, it's, um, been, it's also the structure of the place. It's, it's, you know, and you've got they, to remember, this is a franchise side that should never have survived, Lachlan. They were the what? They were the combination of two teams, two Super League teams. Perth that, and someone else. And Adelaide, wasn't it? The Adelaide Rams. Something stupid, like whatever it was, and yet... And yet they have been so remarkably consistent year after year after. Is, is it the coach? I mean, can you actually credit Craig Bellamy with this, with all of it? Yeah, I think you can. Watching, he's, been watching the Car- one, he's been the one constant. Watching Cartor gallop away and score that try. <laughs> I mean, how many times, Warriors fans, does your heart break when you see a player leave? And guess what? They, guess what happens when they leave? Well, this they happened, become better bloody yeah, players. And, and at the Storm, more specifically, this happened with um, ah, a little bit. He more got into better shape than better form. But um, Sam Cassiano, who left the dogs, went to the storm and all of a sudden got thinned out. It was really bulking and massive and fit. Similar thing with um, uh, Broncos winger Xavier Coates, who went there last year and had an awesome try scoring season. It's like players going to the Crusaders, isn't it? It, they... is, it is. It's the exact same yeah. as players going to the Crusaders. Yeah. Yeah. It's an establishment that continues to succeed, and that is because of Craig Bellamy. 2.17 time. Let's take a little break. You're listening to The Platform. Martin Devlin, Lachlan War, iOS. It's only sports.